Hi, my name is David. I'm from Electric Teaching, and I'm going to show you how to graph ellipse and determine the vertices, co-vertices, and focal points. And focal points. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a standard form. Up here, up here, this equation. Whoops, moved that accidentally. But this equation right up here, okay, is our Standard form up in that equation right there. You could see that we have we have um, a shift in the x indicated. This is the shift in the x. I often tell the students to ask what makes zero to get the actual shift horizontal with that one, and then the shift in the y is indicated in there. For the first example problem, the first example problem, if you look at this and even ask my favorite question, which is what makes zero out of those quantities, the X and the Y values that make zero out of those quantities are in fact zero. So I like to ask the question, what makes zero to determine the center of the ellipse first? In this case, since the answer is zero, zero, I already know my center is at the coordinate zero, zero. So I will place that dot right there and label it with a center, label it with a center. Now, to determine how wide and how tall, how wide and how tall, I often call that the displacement from center. So the displacement from center, the exact way a boat will displace water equally to each side, um, starboard and port if you want to get technical, that's the way a boat will stay upright and in water. So I often use the word displacement. The, it, what we do is we displace from the center. My center is at zero. What I do is I, instead of using a formula and saying because A is equal to this or B is equal to this, and I've even seen textbooks reverse A and B depending on which one's the larger one, and I don't like that. That to me is telling the student to just be a robot and execute formulas blindly. So I'm trying to build an understanding here that can be remembered year after year. So underneath the X, I hope that makes sense. Underneath the X will be the X displacement. To me, that is something that I can make sense of. Underneath the Y will be the Y displacement. So instead of using the A and B squared and referring to A and B, I don't like to do that. I just like to look at what is under each of the values x and y to determine the horizontal and vertical displacement. Do remember that these items are squared in the formula, that these items are squared in the formula. So when I look at the number 4 here, I'm thinking square root. So square root of number 4 is 2. The displacement horizontal is 2. So I'm going to come to the center and I'm going to go out 2 to the right, horizontally, and 2 to the left, 2 to the left. Same idea with y, same explanation, displacement in the vertical, though, because it's y. So 16 square root is 4. So that means I'm going to displace 4 up and 4 down. I'm going to label these so I can get an idea of where I'm at and also find it very easy to list my coordinates uh, on, uh, for uh, responding to the question of find the vertices and covertices. So right now, I've got the basic outline of the ellipse. It's important to know that when we move on to hyperbolas a little bit later, you now have the outline for the box as well. The ellipse is inscribed in this box where if you go out two from the middle and up and down four from the middle, you obviously have a displacement of four wide and eight tall. Be careful with how far you're going from the middle out, and then exactly how wide and tall the box is. The actual ellipse is inscribed inside of it, touching the vertices just once on the box, is inscribed inside of that box. So, so sometimes at the beginning, I leave this, I let the students build the box first because it's important, and then I it would inscribe the ellipse. I'm going to edit, undo that real quick and then actually show you what the ellipse answer looks like. But imagine that box there. So I'm going to try to curve this almost the same way I try to curve parabolas and when I draw parabolas and other conic sections and try to get an approximate feel of how that is. Now that's not the best drawn ellipse, but I am satisfying that I hit the key points along the way. 
And those key points are, let's see, we got the vertices. Remember, the vertices are along the major axes, the major axes. We often call the major axes would be the longer side, the longest side. So if you look down the symmetry line, the symmetry line that splits this vertically and the symmetry line that splits this um, horizontally, actually I said it backwards, horizontally first, so it splits it horizontally, splits it into a left and right half. And then the other uh, symmetry line, there's only two symmetry lines on an ellipse. Neat little question that teachers like to ask. Circles, infinite symmetry lines. With ellipse, two symmetry lines. So that's the only way you can get two equal mirrored images. The longer one, this is called the major axis. So sometimes you need to label what that is. In this case, it's y equals 0 because it's where all the y values are. Excuse me, it's x equals 0. I did that backwards. I, I often do that. I apologize. Teachers do make mistakes once in a while. I just try to catch them. Okay, so this is exactly where x is always 0. x is always 0 to label the y-axis. And over here, the, they call this the minor axes, the minor axes. What's most important, that's the y equals 0, what's most important to know is that the focus points lie on the major axes. I need to repeat that. The focus points lie on the major axes. So let's label the vertex points. We've got them up at... Let's see, 0 left and right, 4 up, 4 up, and the other vertex is the same idea except 0, negative 4. I often just write plus or minus 4. And the co-vertices, the co-vertices, a lot of books call them co-vertices. I'm not sure if it's called that in every book, but the co-vertices would be the smaller distance ones, and that's at negative 2, 0, and 2, 0, looking at the dots here and here, and the top ones up and down. Focus points. Books tend to give you a formula. The book I'm using right now gives you a formula. They want you to often just treat it blindly. Don't understand why it comes from here. Just use this formula and boom, you magically have a focus point. I rather you think how the focus point controls the curve, knowing the focus point is on the major axes. I think that is the most important part. So what I always tell the students to do is just build a right triangle. The right triangle you build goes from the vertice and or excuse me, from the fo focus to the center always. You always have a focus to center line for building a right triangle to determine the focus. So what I do is I have the students approximate where the focus point is. Somewhere up in this area, and somewhere down in that area is the point controlling the curve. Um, I like to use a, uh, a string and a couple of pens and a pencil to have students practice drawing an ellipse sometimes. Maybe your teacher has done that. So that maybe you understand how that point, that focus point, controls the curve. Okay. So what happens is if you think of a particle coming around the turn here, coming around the curve here, it is being controlled by this focus point on this side, also a little bit by the focus point on the bottom side. So that's your kind of lesson on what focus points do and how they control the circle. Now let's actually determine where they are. So you can see that I've got them uh, circles around about where they are. What I tell the students to do is approximate them and put a dot somewhere down there just to get an idea where it is. It's not exact. You don't know where it is exactly. But put in a focus point, either the top one or the bottom one in this case, if it's a sideways, if it's a more um, elongated horizontal ellipse, then it would be left and right along the major axes. Build a triangle, build a triangle from the center out to that focus point, and then we need to make a right triangle here, so I'm going to make a right triangle going to the left. I could make it going to the right over to this point. I could make it go out to the covert seat to the left. I pick one of these triangles, one of those triangles. Technically, you have four if you use the bottom ones, too. So you have four triangles that you can see using the idea that one of, parts of, one of the, the sides of the triangle has to be focused to center. If you just remember focus to center, I'd rather you think of it that way, and you can build this triangle and determine the exact distance of the focus point. So because of Pythagoras now, because of Pythagoras, 
And uh, something you do have to remember, there is something you got to trust me on. If you've done the string activity in class, maybe you've seen this. The actual distance, the actual distance from, and I'm going to use a highlighter here, the actual distance from center to the vertex, okay, to the vertex, that's going up for or from center going down to the bottom vertex down here, those distances are the hypotenuse of the right triangles that we just made. The hypotenuse of the right triangle we just made. So I'm going to back up. I'm going to edit, undo a couple things here. I want to get rid of some of the triangles there to make this a little cleaner. So if you trust and believe, and that's the one kind of, I guess, almost blind belief in it, unless you've done the little experiment, um, the little um, hands-on experiment by drawing the ellipse in class, then you need to realize that this distance right there is the four distance, the distance from center to focus. <coughs> Excuse me, from center to vertex. So if the hypotenuse is four, we clearly know that this bottom leg right there on the right triangle, the right triangle I'm making right there, is two. Pythagoras says that four squared, okay, equals the two squared plus my little length here. I'll just label that x for the moment. My x distance to the focus point. I'll just use x. I could use y or I could use f if I wanted to. It's just a variable. So 16 minus the 4, 12 is equal to x squared. x is equal to technically plus or minus root 12. Don't forget when you take square roots in algebra, plus or minus. And then you need to consider is the plus or minus idea accurate? And it is. From center, positive up the y coordinate, root 12 is that distance. The actual fo first focus point I have, the first focus point I have is 0x and root 12 up. The second focus point in this case is down root 12, down root 12. So that one is 0, comma, negative root 12. Root 12 is somewhere between 3 and 4, judging because 3 squared is 9 and 4 squared is 16. So understand that it's a little above 3. Now when you come back to my graph, when you come back to my approximation and you look, you can see where I approximated it right here. I actually didn't approximate it very well at all, did I? That's above 2. That looks like it's somewhere between square root of 4 and square root of 9. So what I need, what, what I would do if I was to accurately label this and make sure I would erase my approximation. Nice right, doing things in pencil, huh? Or have an edit that do. I would erase my approximation or just indicate that the actual focus point is down here just below root 3 somewhere, or excuse me, um, root 9, which is uh, uh, 3. So somewhere down there is where our focus point there is. I call that one the focus 2 point, that one up there the focus 1 point, which would be a little bit higher too. Well, I hope this helps in understanding how to get ellipse and not just blindly using the formulas. I'm David from Electric Teaching. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. Before I leave, I want to show you, almost forgot, a great place to practice these is a website I made. If you go to electricteaching.com, in electricteaching.com, if you go to conics and calc puzzles, I have made some ellipse puzzles and an ellipse quiz. So let me just show you as an ellipse puzzle here. These puzzles include the ones that in this one, an ellipse two here, that these include um, ones that have the shift. So as I tell the students, I look at, at where the center is based on what makes zero, what makes zero out of these. So this guy looks like it's centered at, what makes zero out of this one? Well, x equals zero. What y makes zero there? What y will make zero out of that quantity? Well, that's negative three. So I'm looking for, on this puzzle piece, where is zero, negative three, the center? Zero, negative three, the center. And it looks like the, this puzzle piece right here is, so I'm going to line it up and give it a shot. Then I try to find the coordinates that match being on the graph. So looking at this one, this one has 0, 0, and it doesn't look like 0, 0. It hits the graph right there. I also could plug and chug 0 in for x and 0 in for y up above. Oops, let's switch places there. And then you can see whether or not that makes the equation true. So I'm going to go with the fact that this one deduces that one goes over there, and then you can finish the puzzle, and there's a check button down below. Okay, I'm David from Electric Teaching. I hope this has helped.